and uh, the, the age pigment lipofuscin was uh, one of the things that I found was involved in high estrogen and aging or stress or radiation damage. And uh, lipofuscin is a breakdown product of polyunsaturated fatty acids largely uh, with other things bound into little uh, brown lumps in the cells. Uh, and it consumes oxygen and wastes uh, energy and eventually can kill the cell. But uh, it, its main uh, function seems to be to, to waste oxygen and energy. And those are those little brown spots that people call age spots or liver spots on yeah, their skin. Yes, they form in the brain, on the skin, everywhere. Uh, and uh, it, they tend to get uh, form faster and faster the more stress you're under. And uh, pretty soon, uh, if, if you're under the influence of unopposed estrogen, uh, they can just uh, eat all the oxygen and not leave any for the cell functions. And uh, that was what really started me getting interested in the um, unsaturated fat metabolism. Uh, I did that dissertation in 1972, and that was the year that John Yudkin published his book. I think it was called um, uh, Pure White and Deadly or something. Pure White and Dangerous, maybe. Um, and I read that and was so impressed by his arguments that sugar increases uh, blood lipids, uh, saturated fats, and cholesterol that that was what uh, started me on uh, the idea of recommending increased sugar for people who were under stress because I had already uh, become convinced that there was no basis at all for the, the connection between uh, high cholesterol and saturated fats and atherosclerosis and heart disease and so on. And and so when I would see someone <clears throat> deficient in progesterone, having too much estrogen and age pigment, uh, they, they would often uh, recover if they could increase their cholesterol production. And the simplest way to do that was to have them eat some extra sugar and uh uh, that started me um, seeing the therapeutic possibilities of sugar, but um, f from there I worked backwards, understanding where the lipid hypothesis had come from, and especially the doctrine that essential fatty acids are essential nutritionally. And since they're what lipofuscin is made from, uh, it seemed increasingly important to understand uh, how that theory came about. So uh, I saw that George and Mildred Burr were the ones who had had uh, created that idea in 1929 and 30. And in their uh, experiment, they didn't at that time know about most of the essential nutrients, vitamins and minerals. And so they fed what they thought was a complete diet. And uh, when they um, eliminated uh, um, the linoleic and related so-called essential fatty acids, uh, their animals uh, developed uh, skin symptoms and, and various uh, things that they called the bird disease. And... Uh, their diet consisted to purify it of, um, so they could put in only the nutrients that were known in 1929. Hmm. Uh, they used a high sugar content, uh, a little starch, and a protein case, casein that had been highly purified. Uh, they recrystallized the sugar and uh, precipitated the casein to eliminate all the vitamins and minerals from it and then added what they thought were the essential nutrients. And uh, so the animals, when they removed linoleic acid uh, from their diet, developed these uh, scaly tail symptoms and, and uh, so on. Uh, three years 
after that, um, George Burr put one of his rats under a, a bell jar and saw that it was burning oxygen at 50% faster rate than uh, the rats uh, getting the normal essential fatty acid uh, diet. And uh, he decided that that was because their skin was leaky <laughs> because uh, he said the, the essential fatty acids uh, create a barrier in the skin, po- just making this up out of whole cloth. <laughs> but uh, since at, in the same journals where uh, George and Mildred Burr published these ideas, those journals had already published articles by several well-known researchers showing that uh, animals are healthier without fats in their diet and lived longer, didn't get cancer and so on. But the birds just absolutely ignored the counter evidence and just went ahead and published their doctrine and uh, their financiers supported them, but the world didn't pay much attention to it. Fifteen years later, in the mid 1940s, uh, uh, Roger Williams' famous lab in Texas, University of Texas, uh, had been working on the B vitamins, discovering new B vitamins and essential minerals and such, and they created the um, exact uh, diet that Burr had fed the rats, created the so-called Burr disease, and then cured it by supplementing them with vitamin B6. And so what had happened was that uh, on a high-sugar diet, the animals were burning calories 50% faster than normal. And on a terribly deficient diet, they got scaly skin, <laughs> largely because of a vitamin B6 deficiency. And uh, the birds, uh, that pretty much just ruined... <clears throat> Their, their scientific accomplishment. <clears throat> but meanwhile, the um, pig industry ha- had uh, come to have problems with uh, the, the chemical that they were using to reduce feed intake, uh, shut down their thyroid function, and make them get fat cheaply. And uh, they found that by substituting a high polyunsaturated fat diet, uh, soybeans and corn, they could suppress their thyroid just as well as using that toxic drug mm-hmm. and uh, uh, make them get fat on a, a small food intake. And uh, the Burr's essential fatty acids uh, turned out to be uh, what was suppressing the thyroid. But at the same time, the uh, seed oil industry uh, was losing its market for extracting these unsaturated fats to use in paint and uh, plastic manufacture. And that turned the whole seed oil industry, uh, all the seed uh, products that weren't used to fatten livestock, uh, they found that they could increase the sales of these uh, extracted seed oils by promoting the idea that they were healthful for human consumption. They had been hardening them to make margarine and uh, by promoting their uh, health benefits, they could sell them directly as liquid cooking oils and salad oils. And to do that, they uh, found that a biological effect was that they lowered uh, cholesterol production or a lowered the cholesterol that appeared in the blood, caused it to increase in the liver uh, as a defensive reaction. But uh, they created the doctrine of uh, cholesterol as the cause of heart disease and to uh, eat more of the unsaturated fats, even though they knew that they would create obesity as they did in the pig industry. Uh, They convinced doctors by a huge campaign that... um, Cholesterol was found in the wall of uh, arteries that were developing atherosclerosis and that uh, 
since you could lower the cholesterol in the blood, they argued that you would lower the cholesterol in the wall of the artery and that that would prevent heart disease. And uh, uh, Ravenskov, much later, um, showed that none of those arguments uh, had any evidence to support them. Uh, the uh, atherosclerosis didn't have a direct connection to heart disease mortality. Cholesterol in the blood didn't have a connection directly with the formation of atherosclerosis. And dietary uh, fats, saturated fats, uh, didn't uh, create the cholesterol in the blood. But uh, as the there was a slight uh, um, backsliding in, in the ability to sell doctors on the idea of eating unsaturated fats to lower <clears throat> cholesterol. Um, uh, there was a study with veterans in which putting them on the liquid oil diet, eliminating saturated fats, caused more of them to die of heart disease <laughs> and a lot more of them to die of cancer. <clears throat> so uh, there was some problem with with that lipid theory already in the 1960s. And John Yudkin uh, came out, he had been doing research since the mid-50s. 1972, he published this book uh, arguing that uh, sugar caused heart disease because it increased cholesterol. And already, since I knew that cholesterol didn't have anything to do with heart disease, except protecting against it to some extent. <laughs> right. Uh, that was where I started uh, realizing that uh, he was right on the issue that sugar would increase cholesterol in some people, 